Hey everybody, I'm Ozzy and today I'm going to show you how I turn these bunch of pictures of heroes, actors and various galaxies into this custom poster entitled Avengers Kang Dynasty. I just want to point out that this is not a tutorial, I plan to do those in the future, but this is basically just a commented speedrun of me doing the poster. But you may learn something anyway, so let's start. So it all started when Jonathan Majors was announced as Kang the Conqueror and I really wanted to recreate this comic book look of him. So I found this image of Thanos' armor, which I wanted to use as a base for my Kang, and I cut it out with a pen tool. Then I found this cool sci-fi looking helmet, which kind of reminded me of Kang's helmet, and I cut it out with the pen tool as well, and I placed it on top of the armor. And of course I needed Jonathan Majors, so I used this image from the Lovecraft Country. I wanted to make his color look like really epic, so I found this image of a Klingon armor and I just placed it in there just to see how it happens. But he looked way too nice, so I needed to make him look more evil. So I warped his uh, eyebrows a little lower and I curved his mouth using the puppet warp so that he looks more evil. Then I used clone stamp to make his head look a little bigger just to fill in the helmet. And then I used this piece of tennis armor just to join them in a way. Then I wanted to add some heroes whose movies were announced and I wanted to start with Black Panther. And since Chadwick Boseman passed away, I wanted to do something else. I got inspired by the comics and wanted to make Shuri the Black Panther. She wasn't announced as a Black Panther, but I figured that would be pretty cool. So I found this cool image of a cosplayer and I cut her out using the pen tool and I used this head of Shuri from the movie and I cut her out and placed there. Another hero I wanted to use that was announced was Shang-Chi. So I found this cool concept image, which wasn't really a photograph, but whatever. I cut it out with the pen tool and just placed it in my image. Then of course I needed Simu Liu's head, so I just found some and placed it over there. Then I wanted to use Thor, and Natalie Portman was announced as the next Thor, so I got inspired from the comics and found this image of a cosplayer and cut her out. Then I found this photo of Natalie Portman from the movie Your Highness and just place it in. I used clone stamp to draw some pieces of the armor that were covered by the previous hair and erased some of her neck so that it would feel like her head is actually in the armor. Next hero would be Captain America. But as we all know, Steve Rogers wouldn't be a Captain America anymore, so I figured I could use Falcon. So I used this image of Captain from the Winter Soldier and I cut him out again using the pen tool and I placed it in my image. I wanted the shield to be a little more visible so I found another image of him and just cut out the shield. And then I cut out Falcon's head and his armor and just placed it over him. Now I wanted to add Blade to the poster as well since Marshall Ali was announced as Blade. And I found this great picture of him from Alita, the Battle Angel. But he also has this coat on so that would be usable for Blade. I just had to delete the logo from the bottom. So I cut out the logo using clone stamp and cut him out using the quick selection tool since the background was pretty solid. Since he didn't have any weapon and he had this weird hand gesture, I figured I could put a sword in his hand. So I found this image of a katana sword, cut it out with the pen tool and placed it over him. Then I copied his hand and placed it again over the sword so that it would look like he's actually holding the sword. I needed his coat to be black so I desaturated the whole picture and I removed the mask from his hands and his head so that is the only parts that are in color. Then I used clone stamp to remove all the distracting things from his clothes, which would be buttons and pockets. And then I had this great idea to put this old Blade logo from Wesley Snipes movies and just place it under his neck. It's barely visible but I thought it's a nice touch. Since I wanted to work with him as a whole I just blended his sword a little. Then I added the two heroes that we already knew and saw many times which was Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, as well as the Avengers logo. Then I thought I should make Natalie Portman's breasts a little smaller since it felt like they were too big. So yeah, it took me like 40 minutes to make her breasts smaller and redraw the missing pieces of the armor that were created by this blank space. I think it looks better now, whatever. Then I thought Shuri's hairstyle is just way too large to fit under the Black Panther mask. So I decided to change her hairstyle myself. That was pretty ambitious and it actually took a lot of time to change her hair. But I think the result looks pretty good. I used the warp tool for that and a lot of clone stamp. And basically I was warping her hair and her head. I removed the chin color and just extended her chin a little. 
And then I looked at her costume from the comics and I saw that she had this white mane around her neck. So I found this image of a pillow and wanted to turn it into the mane. That was also very ambitious and it took me a lot of time to warp it uh, into a shape that would look kind of cool. This is the part where I usually waste a lot of time and that's composition of the characters. Uh, I usually try all the different versions and I don't know, I just need to feel like it looks okay. Once I was satisfied with it, I thought this poster could use someone small so I decided I wanted to add Rocket Raccoon in the corner. And then again I toyed with the composition, which took some time. Believe me, I cut most of the thing out. Once I was happy with my composition, I started cutting out Rocket by using the pen tool. This was pretty challenging and it took me a lot of time. Pen tool is the best way to select objects, but it's also the most time consuming. I also had to uh, remove all the empty places from the selection. And then I used the select and mask tool to mask his fur. I was pretty happy with the results since, since it was a really high quality image and the background was solid. So masking the fur looked pretty good. Now it was time to make Natalie Portman's hair blonde and since I like to jump from character to character I decided that Captain America's armor needs an upgrade. I didn't have any idea how it would look like in the end, I just wanted the America star and I wanted to blend it more so that it doesn't look like it's just a falcon armor placed on top of him. I made pieces of it blue which I did using hue and saturation adjustment layer. Then I did the same thing on the other side because I was an idiot and I didn't copy my mask. I desaturated the shoulders and then I wanted to add some highlights and some white and red color on the rest of this uniform so that it looks uh, similar to the Falcon one. In the end I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks like a mix between the Falcon uniform and the Captain America uniform. I also added some shadows to make it look more realistic. So then I moved to Kang. I thought he didn't look evil enough, so I did the same thing all over again. I placed his eyebrows lower and I warped his mouth with a puppet warp. I turned him blue, which was the main part, except for the eyes. Then I found this cool fan art of Kang and I was pretty sad I didn't find it earlier, but at least I could use his wrinkles and these uh, shapes that he has all over his face. So I copied the scars that he has, his uh, eyebrows and some of the texture of his face. I just wanted to put more stuff on his face. And how to make someone even more evil? You just darken his eyes a little. So I did that and I made the eyes look glowy. Then I added some shadows and I still wasn't happy with the amount of stuff on his face so I found this image of Darth Sidious and I placed his wrinkles on top of him. It didn't make much of a difference but I was happy with it in the end. Then I added shadows to his helmet so that it looks uh, like it's actually covering his face. I used brush and black color for that and then I moved to coloring his helmet. Since the helmet was purple I used hue and saturation adjustment layer and I colored it purple and one color just didn't do it so I used three of them so I masked out the orange parts I masked out uh, separately the dark parts and the light parts into three different masks and added a different adjustment layer to each other so that it looks more complex and just not so dull then I removed all the scratches from his neck using clone stamp and to make it more similar to the helmet since it's a completely different part of armor it should look like one piece of armor, so... And in the end, I decided I wouldn't use the Klingon color, so I just copied the color from the fan art and placed it in there. And that was a great decision, because it was very hard to color that Klingon color. And then I needed to make it all look like one solid piece of armor, so uh, I copied a bunch of stuff, I used the cloning tool, and I added a lot of shadows, and I tried to blend the colors in. His body should be green, so I colored it green using hue and saturation adjustment layer. And then I added some final touches. Uh, I added some lights and I deepened the shadows as well. I added some purple color to his body shape as well, so that it's not just only green. Once I was a little done with it, I decided to start with the background. I didn't have any idea of how the background should look, I just thought it could be spacey, so I found these three or four images of different nebulas and galaxies and just place them on top of each other and change the blending mode to overlay it and multiply. And I was pretty happy with the result. It looks epic enough. 
I thought I was done with the amount of characters, but then I realized I didn't add any Eternal. So I wanted to add Kingo, Kumail Najani's character. Since he got so buff to be in my poster, I needed to do it. He looks like the samurai in the comics, but I already found some concept of him and I decided I wanted to use it, except for the face, because I didn't really like his glowing eyes. So I cut him out with the pen tool, placed it in my composition, moved the sword just a little down, and uh, then I found this image of Kumalanjani and then I placed it in my poster. But he looked way too smirky, so I needed to make him more badass. So what I did, I just warped his eyebrows and I puppet warped his mouth. And bam, now he looks badass. Then I moved again to the background. I found this cool sci-fi hut, added some depth to the space. I added a couple more images. In the end, I think it was like four images of space on top of each other with different blending modes. Mostly overlay, multiply or screen. Then I needed something for the bottom of my poster. I didn't want it to be just empty space. I knew I wanted to use a different planet, so I found this rocky planet and I cut it out and placed it on the bottom and toyed around with, I wanted more mountains, not so much snow. I changed the color to blues and purple so that it would fit with the poster. And I think I was pretty done with the background. That was it. But I wasn't happy with the composition. So I moved that a bit and I switched Shang-Chi and Shuri. Now I just wanted to finish the adjustments on the characters. So I started with Doctor Strange and I prolonged his cape. And now it was time for the most important and hardest part of every Photoshop image that I do. And that's lightning. I started with Kang. And for that I used exposure adjustment layer. And I started to paint some highlights on him. Just without any idea of how it should look. In these poster images, light is usually coming from all over the place. So I just started painting how I felt. It might look cool and epic. Not just around the bright spots, but also the dark ones. I still wasn't pretty happy with how it looked and I didn't know what to do to make it look better and then I realized I just needed to add some pink lightning so I added this global pink light using hue and saturation adjustment layer and suddenly I realized that this is the pattern I needed to do and I needed to repeat uh, on all the characters and I also should have started with the pink one now the highlights looked much better now, I thought I need some uh, joining material between the characters. I usually use smoke or fog or sand, but here it wouldn't work so well. So when I was looking for inspiration, I checked out the Avengers Endgame poster and I really liked those rays of light, but I wanted to take it to the next level. And I found this image of a blurred sky, I think, or blurred constellation. I just placed it over Kang and masked out parts that I didn't want. And then I moved to Kingo and to all other characters. And what I did is basically I did the same thing. But this time I started with the pink global light using the hue and saturation adjustment layer. And then I painted the highlights using the exposure layer. I added some light using just white brush behind and in front of the characters. I used color balance to add some purple and the blue. And I used levels to highlight the shadows of all the characters. And I also pinch contrast a little. And the last part for every character would be placing these light rays over them. And this is basically what I did for all the characters. Usually when I overdo it with the highlights, I don't tend to delete them. I just add some more light sources behind the character and it just makes the poster look more epic. And this process I repeated for all characters. So pink light, exposure, levels, color balance, contrast, and in the end I added the light effect. And this is basically what I did for all the characters, so I won't repeat myself, I will just let you watch it right now. that Kingo's sword looks a little boring so I added these blue flames around it and warped them around. For Doctor Strange I also used an orange hue and saturation adjustment layer from the spell from his hand and I masked it over his face and also around Captain America's shoulder. And I repeated all the steps with the lightning effect for the rest of the characters. Thor, 
wanted to add lightning. So I found this cool image of lightning and I placed it all around in front of her and behind her just to make her look more electric, which also required a lot more highlights. Then I fixed the shadows around her neck and I also fixed her hair, which I didn't like, looked way too plastic. I added more highlights, changed the color and did the same thing as with the rest of the characters. And the last one was Racket, nothing special there, just repeating the steps. Once I was done with the characters, I wanted the logo to pop a little, but not too much, so I just made it a little brighter. And I added the title, Kang's Dynasty, which is also a comic name, and I thought that would be fitting. And of course, the most important part, the camera raw filter, where I usually don't know what I'm doing, and I'm just moving things around, and whatever looks better, I move it in that direction. But clarity and texture are my favorite things, and they always help. And the very last step was adding a little film grain. Phew, so that was it. That was how I made the Kang Dynasty poster. And this is how it looked like before I added all the adjustments, layers and lightning. And this is the final version. As you can see, lights are the most important part of every Photoshop composition. So thank you guys so much for watching, if you bear it all the way to the end, I know it's been long and at the same time really fast, uh, this is my first ever comment video, I hope the next ones will be better, I still have so much to learn and so many things to improve, so anyway, if you liked the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, you can find the link in the description, and until next time, peace out!